Hello everyone and welcome to Pro Yes Cricket, where we help cricketers like yourself get fitter and stronger. Today we're diving into a strength session for the posterior chain, so your lower back, your glutes and your hamstrings. Um, so we're going to be running through exercises for all those. Strengthening these muscles makes a huge difference to how you play and how you stay away from injuries. Don't worry, you don't need to be a pro athlete to do these exercises. Whether you're just starting on your cricketing journey or you're trying to take that next step to your next cricket level, these exercises are simple and effective for everyone to do. I walk you through every exercise as I do them and just talk about how it's going to benefit your cricket game. It's going to be great for both batsmen and bowlers. Um, so I'm going to warm up now and then I'll get straight into it. So as you noticed with the strength series, if you've seen any of the videos, if not, you can see we've got like three other sessions now um, for the full week of training. So this is our fourth day. Um, as with every other day, this is going to be our compound movement of the day, um, which is going to be a deadlift. And we're going to go for five sets of five, like every other day. Um, when we get to the end of the video, I'll sort of talk about progressions on this, um, where you can take this training um, if you wanted to do like a six-week block of it. Obviously, we've done five fives all the way through this week. Um, so we'll carry on that theme, but then that'll change them for the next week. Train going past again. Right, so yeah, as I said, we're going to deadlift first. I'm just going to warm up, run through a few weights till I get to around what I think what sort of the ideal weight will be. Um, that'll be a couple of sets, and that'll get me warm then and primed for the five sets of five. Um, I might stick to the same weight, but you can work it out as you go. You just play it by feel. Should have a couple of, couple of reps left in the tank every set. So should be thinking like, oh, I got like maybe seven reps would be ideal there, but that would be failure um, for me. That'd be max now, but we don't want to go there. So we'll cut it short and we go to five. Um, but then again, you know, you could run through this and you feel like, oh, I've got 10 reps in the tank. And then that means the weight is too light. So then you go up in weight. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, just going to run through this now and I will show you then the first set um, of my deadlifts. <sighs> Right, so whew, that was all right. So I was 120 for my first set of five. Um, I felt all right actually. I may need to go up a bit and wait. Um, but you can take that as you go, especially if you use your first session. Like you start going through your fives, you feel like it's too light, it's too heavy. You can change as you go. Uh, incredibly out of breath, obviously. But yeah, as you notice there, just a few pointers. Stopped, dead stop to the bottom of every rep, then bounce it up. And the idea is stop, get nice and tight so you can sort of feel the weight. It's like if you're nearly, so when you set up, it's like if you're nearly sort of pulling the bar off the floor, that's sort of where you want to start. So you're not loose, you want to be tight, tight before you start going. Um, so yeah, reset after every rep. Don't bounce it off the floor, hand fast and explosive on the way up. So. Those are the main things with the deadlift. This is going to be, I said sort of like going through how it's going to help you cricket and I said at the start, I'll talk about it as I go. So this is going to be targeting in your glutes, your hamstrings and your lower back. And this will get them seriously strong. Um, you can do a trap bar variation. Um, but in my opinion, trap bar goes a bit more quaddy. Focuses a bit more on your quads and do the lower back and sees that we're squatting at the start of the week. I'd rather this session be purely posterior. Obviously, there is a bit of quad use in the deadlift, but this is why I'm sort of straight, or straight bar deadlifting. And going into cricket, sort of your glutes, your hamstrings, big drivers in terms of playing your cricket shots, um, sprinting. Going to get so much power. Um, if you've got strong glutes, if you've got strong uh, hamstrings, if you've got a strong lower back, you'll get so much um, power in your cricket shots, especially hitting on the leg side, where there's so much rotation in your hips. That glute, that hamstring, that lower back coming through, 
we get so much more power. People always think about like, I don't know, when you're, when you're batting, people must focus on like your arms. People are thinking like, oh, if I have quick wrists, if I have fast arms, I'm gonna produce more power. Like your arms are gonna do nothing compared, hang on, this has got a point, there's a train going past. That is gonna do nothing compared to what these, these muscles can do, your lower back, your glutes and your hamstrings, they're massive muscles, especially compared to your arms and your forearms. You generate so much more power through these than you will through your arms. So, it's a general point, take that away. Um, I'm gonna do the rest of my sets now. I'll film the next set and then we'll move on to the next exercise. Um, but I'll go up in weight. So that was our main sort of compound movement out of the way. Out of the way, done. Our deadlifts. Um, so next up we're gonna do a single leg RDL um, with, so I do these are probably a touch different to what you've seen. So you normally see people lift their back leg. So I'll show you a bit of a setup now before I get started and I'll talk you through it. Um, I tend to not lift my back leg just for the pure reason of, I don't want this, Sometimes I feel like when you do a single leg RDL, you're just looking for your balance half the time. Um, so through this variation, um, we'll use our back leg just as a bit of a prop, so we don't fall over, don't fall side to side. And that means the focus can then stay on our hamstrings and our glutes and developing that, because that is the main aim and that's where we're doing this. Um, so yeah, I'll talk you through the setup now quickly. And then we'll get stuck in. Three sets of 10, a bit of a tempo on the way down. So three seconds on the way down in the lift. Fast explosive on the way up. Um, and you should go down really as far as, until you can sort of feel like a really good stretch in your hamstring. Um, and if you don't feel that, what I tend to say when you sort of think about it, when you're going down in the lift, um, then you sort of imagine having like a door behind you and you're trying to close it with your ass, you're trying to push it shut. And that you should then, that's normally a good cue, should then feel it in your hamstring. If not, put in the comments. Send me a video if you want and I'll, uh, and I'll see what I can do. See if I can help you in any way. But yeah, right, I'll take you through the setup now. So I go dumbbell in the opposite side, the sort of opposite hand to the leg I'm working. Start with your feet together. And then, so the variation that you probably see normally is sort of a leg back in the air like that. So start of, we're gonna do sort of, want to go sort of the same, all your weight on your working leg. And then as if you're just gonna start that movement, your leg just drags back a bit. And then until, and then we're gonna leave our leg just on the floor there. So all my weight is still in my front leg, on my working leg. And then my toes are just touching the floor there. And then from there, we just go hips back until you feel a stretch and then up. So that's one rep, and then that leg just stays there then all the time. So we're never really looking for our balance, it just stays there for our balance. So we go for about 10 reps here.
So yeah, let's come up a bit. So you should really feel that through your glute and your hamstring on that front leg, on the working leg. And then the back leg is just purely for balance. So that was my first set, 10 each side, no rest between the two. And now I'll do like two to three minutes rest between every set. Same tempo all the time, a couple of seconds on the way down, nice and, excuse me, nice and controlled. Quicker and more explosive on the way up, like every other movement that we're gonna do. So do another set now, another two sets. And we'll go on to then a barbell hip thrust for the glutes. So there was our sort of one-sided work done, um, so our single legged work. So normally when I do these strength sessions, whether it is upper body or lower body, I tend to like to add like a, a one-sided one or a unilateral exercise in there, um, just to make sure um, you don't get any imbalances sort of, they're great for like staying injury free and stuff like that. Cause if you can do, if you're doing like bilateral movements all the time, and you're heavily compensated on one side, you're just gonna keep doing it. And doing these one exercise, these one side exercises, you'll be able to really see if you are weaker one side than the other. Um, I'm now fairly well balanced and I can feel it, you know, reps, are, reps and weight are normally the same either side. But if you are doing it and you feel you are heavily one sided, say, go with the weaker side first and then go to where you think is sufficient, where you're like working towards that failure in terms of that weight. And then do the same on the other side. Don't go more reps, more weight on the other side. Keep it the same until you sort of find a balance. It'll come with weeks and weeks of this. Um, you will get there and you'll balance out. And then you, then you start increasing the weight. But don't go more weight, more reps on one side than the other. Um, so yeah, next exercise now we're gonna do a, a hip thrust or a glute bridge a barbell, hip thrust, and uh, you can do these with dumbbells if you find it a bit easier. This is probably the world's hardest exercise if I can get into, especially when you're using a bench, if you've got like a little box or something, it's a bit easier, um, but I've got a bench, that's all I have. Um, but yeah, again, great exercise for the glutes and the hamstrings. And as we sort of went over before, in terms of these are massive power generators for your cricket, sprinting, so going to benefit all your areas of cricket um, quite a lot actually so yeah great exercises I'll go through this now and then we'll go for one more exercise after this um, I'll explain a bit seems maybe a bit more low volume but I'll explain why sort of after we get through this exercise um, so yeah I guess that'll up now <sighs> Wow. <sighs> 
So, as with all the exercises, slow control on the way down, fast explosive on the way up. And again, three sets of 10 for me. That was a bit light. Um, sort of getting my way back into this posterior exercises, got a bit of a dodgy hamstring. Um, so I'll probably stay at this weight for now, just to see how it goes, see how I am tomorrow, if it's killed me or not. So I'll do another set now, probably another set of 10, another two sets, sorry. Again, three, two, three minutes rest between these. Um, working near to failure again. You want two reps in the tank if you're doing this properly. Um, but yeah, and then we'll go on to one more exercise. Right, so now this is gonna be our last exercise. As I said, it does feel probably quite low volume to probably our other days, but if you've done this session correctly, working towards like sort of that failure area, you will be knackered probably by this stage and probably ready to finish. All the exercises we've done use such large muscle groups. You will find today probably, and the other lower body day, a lot more fatiguing. Fatiguing, you can speak, come on than the other days, the upper body days. Um, so yeah, so now we're gonna finish. Bit of an opposite exercise, so we're gonna do a cable crunch. So you're gonna work your abdominals. Um, obviously, yes, this isn't a posterior chain exercise. Um, I like doing this on this day, because you work, because um, I've been working all the posterior so much. Um, I just find that I get, um, if I don't do it, um, I guess it's just tight lower back and I end up walking around sort of like this all day with a bent back and um, it feels a bit detriment detrimental to me uh, and it hurts a bit. So I add these in um, and it's great, great exercise anyway. So the cable crunch, if you can see what I have here, I will take the camera closer potentially. So what I have is a little pulley system, pretty inexpensive thing, um, costs about 30 quid on Amazon and you can just sort of hook it up to your bar if you don't have it, if you're working in your garage gym and then it has like a little plate loader um, to the bottom and then it comes with all sorts of attachments. So I got like the rope sort of pulled down on this. This is the sort of setup. I have a clip over there to hold that over there and I'll be working down here. So yeah, that is the setup. Obviously, if you're in a gym, you can just use a normal, all right. If you are just in a gym, just use a normal pulley system. Something I haven't got, unfortunately, to me. Um, and I prefer doing these sort of videos in my garage where I can just talk and not get on anyone's nerves. So, uh, yeah, three sets of 10 on this. I'll talk you through, I'll do a set now and just talk you through sort of what I'm doing, what I'm focusing on. But as with all the other exercises, slow and controlled on the way up, sort of fast explosive on the way down. Yeah, I think I did like 12-ish there, so working that range again, going close to failure, about two reps off. Um, 
felt my ass coming towards my heels a bit much. I was in slightly wrong position. So what you're trying to look at is sort of imagine this is your knee in here. So I'm trying to keep that right angle. It's your ass up here, your feet down here. Um, and then sort of have your back parallel to the floor or your body, your upper body parallel to the floor. And then squeeze, squeeze your abs on the way down. Sort of your elbows going towards your knees, forehead towards your knees. Sort of what I aim for. Obviously you will just get to a stopping point where you can't go any further. Um, and then slow and control on the way up. And what you actually want to get to, obviously you'll go back, back to parallel to the floor. But you can, what you want to do is go a little bit further and get a slight arch in your lower back. You might think this is bad for you. Um, but it is not, especially when training your abdominals, your abdominals through a full range of motion. Actually go back into a bit of what's called like spinal extension. Spinal extension. Um, so that is sort of your end range of motion only a little bit. I can't remember the degree exactly to where you can go to, but only a little bit of an arch because then your hips um, start coming into it and then you sort of turn off your abdominals. So yeah. A little bit of an arch in the back is fine. So yeah, this is what we're going to finish on today. Um, as I said, if you found this interesting at all, we've obviously done other days on this. We're now on our fourth day. Um, so we've done two upper body days already and a lower body day. So go back and watch them if you're interested. And we've got one more day, which is actually going to be a conditioning day. So this is all the gym work that we're going to have in our week of strength training. Um, but we're going to have a conditioning session in there as well because we always keep that in because we want to keep our lungs in check for the whole off-season. So yeah, if you enjoy it, obviously drop a comment if you have any questions about any of the exercises at all. And I'll see you in the next video.